So on the bench today, we've got this Unitrex 800K electronic calculator. Uh, it's an interesting piece. I'm not quite sure where I got it. It's been here for a while. It's been somewhat abused. I do have a set of batteries in it. It does power up. Uh, it's got you know a nice little... I'm guessing those are... I don't know if that's... Uh, I don't know if those are LEDs or what they are. I have no clue. Uh, it's acting rather weird. Uh, that seems to be maybe just significant amounts of keyboard bounce. 888. Yeah, it's keyboard bounce. Times 2 equals... Now it looks to me like the keyboard is not working. 1, 2... Three, four, five. Lots of key bounds, keys that aren't working. But core functionality seems to be there. So, you know, the displays light up. Uh, I can get fives all the way across. Clear. All the segments work. So let's go ahead and open it up, take a look inside, see if we can do something about that keyboard. I don't think I've been inside of this one before. Uh, looking at it, it's been dropped. The little catches here on the side are broken from it being dropped. There seems to be a single screw over here. But I assume that's all that holds it together is that single screw. The screw's not quite all the way out. seem familiar like I've opened it up before get that little screw captured huh. the uh, keyboard is socketed although I'm not surprised it uh, boy if I can get it to come up out of there so it, it does say made in Japan on the bottom, made in Japan. EIKO, Eco Business Machine Company Limited, DC 6 volts, 1.0 watts, made in Japan. It does have a power jack input back there. I have no idea if it's center positive or center negative. We could, of course, own that out to find out. Keypad feels okay. There's a single chip. There's what I was hoping to find as a date code, 40th week of 73. So this is coming up on, what is that, 38 years old? Or 48 years old. 48 years old. Holy moly. Uh, 80, yeah, 40. No, do the math here in your head, stupid. 50 minus 7 is 43. 44 years old, I guess. <laughs> I can't do math. If it was made in 1980, it would be 41 years old. We need to add seven. That's 48 years old. There we go. So, uh, interesting boy. You can sure see the patina on that, what I take to be a voltage regulator, perhaps. Definitely uh, oxidized. There has been some, a battery leak in it, but luckily it didn't spread any place. I really can't tell if that display is LED or something else. It's a really cool display. It's also modular. Well, with the gas nipple cover on the back, it's some kind of vacuum fluorescent. It about has to be because I am I can feel yeah, I can see it's two-part glass. I can see where the glass is, is together. So it looks like it's some kind of VFD. That's really nice. Uh... The display does plug down on. I don't know that I'm going to try to pull that loose to release it. I don't really see a need to necessarily get this board up out, although I guess at this point we can. There's going to be nothing on the other side except, you know, copper. Uh, I 
I'm impressed that it's, you know, it's modular. There's actually connectors in places, uh, rather than just directly soldered. So that is a sign in my mind that it's a little bit higher quality, perhaps, than, it, you know, or a little better built than it, it potentially could have been. Uh, that is a VFD display. That's really cool. That's a VFD. Uh, I'm sure that's a, probably a MOS calculator chip, probably highly static sensitive. I am not going to remove it from the socket. We can, like I say, see the date code directly on it. 40th week of 73. I don't recognize the logo. It looks like maybe FT, FR. 1005 is the only real marking on it. There's a 5403. Even says IC 5403 here. It looks to be an interesting kind of dip package. I have no idea what that is. Lots of resistor networks. Uh, definitely seven polycapacitors here. Seven segments, of course. Uh, I don't know. Uh, interesting, but what I really would like to see is can we get this keyboard kind of cleaned up enough that all the keys work? You know, it's a nice little old calculator. Uh, it's too bad those catch tabs are broke off. It does have a brass insert for the screw, so that again kind of says it was, you know, thought about. It was, you know, it, it, it's a little bit nicer build. Uh, I don't know that I like how that screwdriver feels in that screw. I don't know that this one will feel any better. Releasing these, the entire assembly kind of pushed up out of there. I'm assuming spring tension. The keycaps have all stayed in place. So the 8 was one that was giving us trouble. Uh, 8 is... Hopefully I'm not going to have a, sp a spring go flying. It looks like I can release those two tabs and potentially the eight key will come off. I'm going to be careful here this doesn't send parts flying. Uh, do I have a small flap accessible? I do. Yeah, those contacts you can see this one over here is really tarnished. Uh, there's enough gap up underneath this that I could actually just shoot contact cleaner under these and just work them. I would probably have that and make a, a pretty good difference. Uh, can I get it to go back in? I'm afraid of brittle plastics. And breaking these there it clipped back in I'm make a little picture divide times clear entry clear seven four one eight five two zero nine six three period plus equals minus an RV at the board it almost looks to me like there's a mild gold plating on there I, I do believe there is looking at, at just the color of it uh, I don't know if you're catching that or not it's not raw copper it's definitely plated in something and I'm guessing it's a gold plate uh, you can definitely see these are oxidized I don't really know how I'm going to do this. Like so, maybe? Just actuate him a bunch of times. Uh, 
actually I put those in upside down looking at them this should have gone in like so I'm not sure why I put them in upside down that was just me being stupid and they're either at this position or down on that position depending on where the switch is it was just me being stupid putting them in that way I need to flex it a little bit now get a little more bend to it a little bit more tension on it because that one seems really flat for now we'll just put these three screws in to create tension between the switch body or, or the the little metal slide and the PCB that should fix the power switch and that should be enough now we put it in the off position out geez drop it in should be able to leave it off and the power switch should now work and it does And I can do four period for four decimal points. So nine 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 plus one should equal an overflow when it does, because it can't go to ten thousand because it's fixed at four decimal point. So it's actually a fixed point calculator. That's the other thing that's amazing. So it'll go two decimal places. It's a fixed point math. I mean that was the easiest way I think to do it electronically. Originally, and 73 is pretty early. Uh, that is just amazing. Just amazing. Get this walk back up out of here. rest of the screws in and I'll have to think about what to do to fix the case so I find it kind of hard to believe this keyboard just floated in there where there's screws at one time in this that are missing no there's really not it just kind of floats in there ah it sits on that post there okay I see there's two posts here that it sits down on for support okay that makes sense It's nice that it's modular. Makes what I'm doing here pretty easy to do. I should have left it apart so I could clean this, but wow, that display is just a thing of beauty. Uh, just a thing of beauty. Wow. One, two, three. Let's see. Let's just clear it here. 351.36. Times 351.36 overflow can't do that. Of course, I can't want to. Uh, yep. Hmm. Clear 351 times 351. It should be able to. Yeah, 123, 201. So 351.30. Oops. 351.3 times 351.3 overflows. That's interesting. I should end up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Huh. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm, try I'm trying to take the, uh, the square root of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 351.36307. I'm sure you've heard me say this many times. For some reason, that number is just burned into my brain. And it's something I always play with on a calculator. So, uh, that plastic could use a good polish and clean. It's pretty scratched. It definitely dulls the display down quite a bit. Because, boy, with that off, it's nice and bright and beautiful. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, pretty neat little calculator. I've never polished plastic before, never tried. What that little hole there is for? There's not 
any kind of indicator that looks up through there. But anyhow, I think we will wrap this one up here. Appreciate your coming along for the ride if you got to this point. Pretty neat old calculator.